Hey everybody, it's Marcus. Welcome back for the January 2024 monthly update of our Tesla solar panels and power wall system here. We have some news on the virtual power plant front. Did we get a check that was as big as last year? We'll see. Uh, we're also going to go over that good January data here. It's the start of a new year. Let's get it going. One of the most exciting things that I think Tesla does with the Tesla energy systems and power walls is virtual power plant events. Now, I'm really hoping to see these expand in more and more markets. We do one in conjunction with PG&E, where they take our excess stored electricity in the power walls and, if you'd like, can discharge them to the grid uh, at $2 per kilowatt hour. Now, in 2022, we got a pretty hefty check for those uh, events. 574.77. Now, 2023, they didn't utilize the uh, program as much. There's a minimum of 20 hours, and we were at that 20 hour minimum for the season, which runs from May to the end of October. We sent back about 190 kilowatt hours during those events last year, and we got a check uh, or a check this year for 352.94. So in two years, our power walls have uh, made about a little over $900 for us in these virtual power plant events. Now it's a little bit different this year because Tesla actually you know, popped up a little notification instead of sending a paper check and said, hey, you have a payout available filled out some information for him, linked our bank account, and boom, we had a digital payout. So it's nice to not have that paper check that, you know, whenever I post that on Twitter or X, you know, I get the comments like, why are they still using checks? So finally, it's digital. That's awesome. Um, I'm excited to see what's going to happen this year with a virtual power plant season. Uh, it's greatly increased, at least in the PG&E market here. I think we were up to like 6,300 houses um, you know, that are participating in it now, which is a much, much larger number than it was, you know, 2022, 2023. So I'm excited to see what happens here in the future. I, I just think the virtual power plan is just an awesome program that I hope everybody can, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, enjoy and participate in in the future. Other than our virtual power plant payoff, um, really not too much going on for the month of January here. So we'll go straight into the data. Now, looking at the house usage for December, it was at 896.5 kilowatt hours. For January, it's at 855.2 kilowatt hours. Just a little bit of a decrease there. Um, January was basically about the same for most of the days with a few extra days of charging there. Um, unfortunately, we're still on the grid quite a bit. Uh, January was a slow month for production this year. Um, it's kind of to be expected there. Um, you know, we are increasing our production now that the winter solstice has passed, but we'll go over those solar numbers in a little. Um, historically, over the past three years, house usage was down to 671.1 uh, kilowatt hours in January 2022. 2023 was 839.3 and 2024 was 855.2. So we're pretty much right in line with where we were last year, 22 being the outlier where I just don't think we were charging as much. Take a look at the solar numbers here. Uh, we had some crazy weather patterns here this winter. Lots of these atmospheric rivers uh, that just kept on pelting us with a lot of rain, a lot of wind. So our production numbers in December, as you saw at 482.8 kilowatt hours, were you know, pretty low. January actually went down by a couple kilowatt hours, 477.3. Again, you can look at the graph there. There's, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven or eight days there um, where unfortunately we just didn't really break anything more than five or six kilowatt hours. That's just a lot of rain, a lot of clouds. Um, so at 477.3 kilowatt hours, it's around 15 kilowatt hours per day on average. Um, looking historically, January 2022 was an outlier, I guess, because we produced 792 kilowatt hours that year in January, and we've not come close to that ever since. In 2023, 612.1, and in 2024, 477.3. Again, this is just weather. It's our rainy season. I'm not concerned. Uh, we have lots of excess credits. The 477, I think if we had you know, not had those atmospheric rivers or we just basically had rain for almost two weeks straight, 
we would have produced a bit more and that probably would have put us right in line with January of 2023. 2022, it must not have rained at all. I don't quite remember what happened then, but man, 792. We're Hopefully we'll get back to those numbers someday because that's quite a jump. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at the Powerwall numbers. January, as usual for Powerwalls, uh, is not going to be that exciting. It's uh, We're doing that 60-40 split, so we're not using that much electricity, and then we're keeping a, a portion of the batteries basically protected just in case we have an outage here. So we haven't really seen an outage since April of last year. Um, I don't know what pg and is doing, but keep on doing it. But looking at the numbers here, December 2023, 239.9 kilowatt hours discharged. Uh, in January of 2024, we were at 193.5 kilowatt hours discharged. We don't use as much electricity overnight, basically. You know, we're using it from 4 or 5 p.m. when the sun starts to go away until the morning. And, you know, so it's basically like cooking dinner and then the heat running overnight in our base load. So we're not using the power walls too much, but I do like keeping that... Um, you know, essentially that buffer, I would say, just in case something happens and because we're not producing enough to fully recharge those batteries. Now, historically, looking at discharge rates, we're trending a little bit downwards from 2022 on to 2024 here. Uh, 2022 was 219.8 discharged, slightly down to 207.1 discharged in 2023. Uh, again, the first half of 2023, we're on vacation, so there just wasn't much going on for part of that month. And then in January 2024, that number's down again to 193.5. That's that split again, and you know we're just not using that much in January. Um, thankfully, you just don't have much going on overnight to, to utilize the power walls. Last up is the net grid use numbers. Uh, January, like December, is going to be painful in terms of being on the opposite side of where you want to be. Lots of import numbers. So December 2023, we were at net 584.6 kilowatt hours imported. In January 2024, we were at 565.4 imported with only 20 or so exported. So a net 544.9 imported. So Again, these are going to be our two worst months of the year in terms of using the grid, but it's all banked credits. Doesn't actually cost us anything here. Now, historically, again, January 2022 was the outlier. We had 700 something kilowatt hours of production. So we actually net exported in 2022. That typically doesn't happen, 49 kilowatt hours or so. In 2023, it was back to normal, 265.4 imported, and then January 2024 here, 544.9 imported. Charging the cars, using the, the banked electricity is just a blame here. Nothing to worry about. We're still going to be way in excess, it looks like, for the year, uh, for our yearly true up. Now, I have kind of an interesting story. I want to basically tell you whenever you're looking at a system just try tesla's you know quotes for prices no matter what because you're gonna find they're gonna be the cheapest we had a friend that was look, looking at solar um, and went with a third party installer or a company that was going to use power walls and basically got a quote for five kilowatt hours or so and a power wall and it was forty thousand dollars and uh, when I heard that, I was like, that sounds off. That sounds like a lot. And so I took their numbers and I ran them on Tesla's website. And what they could get with that $40,000 was essentially a 10 kilowatt system with Tesla with two power walls. So you could double the power wall capacity and now it would be power wall threes. Um, basically, that other company wasn't going to be installing power wall threes. And you're getting double the array size for the money from Tesla. So just keep an eye out. You know, the um, in, you know third party people, basically they're gonna charge an upcharge. Uh, it's gonna cost more, you're not gonna get as much. So there is a benefit of going directly with Tesla. And as always, if you're gonna order a system, they're still running the $500 off, whether it's panels, a solar roof, or just power walls. Make sure you use my referral code down below. I'll link it, and that gets you $500 off when you order. Just make sure you order through that link so it ties it to your account. 
Now, I hope you enjoyed January 2024 update here. Just was going to be a quick one. Um, we'll get to your February here soon. See you at the next one.